Hey everyone, it's AJ Stockwell and in this video I'm going to talk through another common pitfall that I see in QuickBooks, which is when people do not apply payments to invoices properly. And there are a few different ways that this can happen and it can also apply to both customer invoices and vendor bills or vendor invoices. So whether it's accounts receivable or accounts payable, I often see that on both sides, people are not recording these payments correctly. And at best, it can lead to somewhat messy books because you have these open transactions and loose ends. But at worst, it can lead to misstatements on your financial statements because you can be recording extra revenue, extra expense or inventory, and things like that. There are a handful of different examples that I'm going to go through and show you. So let's jump right over to QuickBooks. So the first thing that I want to look at is the accounts receivable aging summary. And there are a few different ways to get there. We can go to reports. We can also just search up here. I'm going to type AR and I'm going to open AR aging summary. Now we see a few things here. We have three customers listed and two of them have a zero total balance. This one even just has a zero balance in the one to 30 days section. Now, as a quick overview of the accounts receivable aging summary and AP aging summary, if you're not already familiar, basically what this shows you is if your customers have past due invoices and how past due they are. So if we had current invoices outstanding, that means that they are not yet past due, we would see those amounts in here. And then we have these columns for one to 30 days past due, 31 to 60 days past due, etc. So it just lumps our open invoices into certain buckets according to how past due they are or not. Now let's talk about this one that has zero open balance and doesn't have a balance in any of these time periods except for this zero dollars that's in here. We see that we can actually click this and go into it. And when we look in this, we see we have a customer invoice and we have a customer payment. So that's why the balance is zero, but why is it showing up here? If a customer doesn't have any open balance, we don't need to see them in the aging report. So I'm gonna go back to that and I'm gonna click on the payment. And what we see when we open this is there is a $200 payment that's being recorded as received, but it's not being applied. We see that there's a $200 credit amount that's being left here. So this is effectively just creating a credit on the customer's account. The effect of this is that the invoice is still open, but the payment is also in here as a credit and it's open. And because those net to zero, technically there's zero balance, but this period has activity that's not closed out. So that's why it's still showing on the AR aging report. If we go to this customer's page, we see zero open balance, but when we click in there, what we end up seeing is that they have a $200 overdue balance or overdue invoice. And if we look at the status within here, we see overdue invoice and unapplied payment. The fix for this, and I'm gonna go back to the AR aging first, the fix for this is to click on the payment and now select the invoice that this $200 is paying. So now we see $200 payment applied. I'll go ahead and save and close. And now both of those are cleared out of the AR aging. And if we go back to the main report, that web customer is no longer listed in here because that payment has been applied correctly. Now the next one, and this is very similar, is this John Smith. So this is gonna be the same issue, but what happened here is the invoice is aging longer than the period that we recorded the payment as coming in. So to fix that, it's the exact same thing. We go into the payment and we match it to 
the corresponding invoice, we go ahead and save and close. Now those are cleared out. We go back to the AR aging summary and we see that we only have this one customer left with an open balance. But we see that it's 31 to 60 days past due and we think, hmm, that's kind of weird. We'll click in there. We see that it is just one individual invoice for 2100, but we're pretty sure that we received payment for that. So what's going on? Why is this invoice still open? I don't see any payment received. I'll go to the customer's page. And there's no payment here, but I know that I got that payment from the customer. So what I might do is go look at my banking activity. And I might do that by looking at the bank register for my main checking account. And what I see here is I see a deposit for the amount of that invoice, see $2,100 deposit, but it's manually posted to income. It doesn't have a customer's name on it or anything like that. It doesn't really have any information. And this is where we went wrong. This is something that I see very commonly and it's a really important pitfall to make sure that you don't fall into because what this is doing is duplicating revenue. A lot of businesses who do this, their tax accountant might not catch that this is being done and you could end up paying taxes on additional income that isn't valid. So to illustrate this, I'm gonna to go to this P&L report. So here is a monthly P&L for April and May. And you see that in April, we have $4,200 of design services income recorded. And if I click in there, what I see is we have this manual deposit for 2100, and then we also have that customer invoice because the customer invoice is recording revenue. When we create an invoice for a customer, generally it's posting to revenue because that's where we have this web design services item post. This means that we are duplicating this income and we are way overstating our income for that month. So what is the best way to address this? One solution would be to just delete this deposit and record the payment and record it as being deposited. And that's a perfectly fine solution, especially if you have not yet reconciled your bank account. If you've already reconciled your bank account for this April period, then deleting this deposit will throw off that reconciliation. So I wanna to try to fix this deposit issue, this duplicate revenue issue without deleting the deposit and throwing off the bank reconciliation. Although if you look under this cleared column, we see that these transactions are not yet reconciled. What I'm going to do is go ahead and record receiving a payment from that customer. And if you've already reviewed my videos about undeposited funds, or now it's recently been renamed payments to deposit, then you know there are generally three steps that money flows through in the customer invoicing process, which is first you create the invoice, then you receive the payment, and then you record the payment as being deposited. I'm gonna go ahead and receive payment for this customer. It's gonna go into payments to deposit. I'm going to record it as of that same date, and then I'll go ahead and save and close. So now if I quickly jump to this other tab where I had an AR aging and I refresh it, you'll see that we no longer have any AR aging. Now going back to the bank register, I'm gonna open up this deposit and edit it. And we see our $2,100 payment there. So what I wanna do is select that payment and delete this manual line item. So this is a payment to be deposited. And what we're doing here is indicating that we've now deposited it to the bank. Now we'll go ahead and save and close. And that deposit is now updated. If I go look at 
the PNL and I'll refresh this. We see now that only 2100 of income is recorded here and that's correct. That's going to just be that customer's invoice. We're no longer duplicating that revenue by recording their payment deposit as a separate revenue item. In the next video, I'm gonna show this same process for vendor payments being applied to bills because there are similar pitfalls that can happen there and we want to make sure that we are applying those payments correctly. If you aren't clear what I was talking about regarding accounts receivable and recording payments against invoices in that process, make sure to check out my other videos about undeposited funds and making sure that those are recorded properly. I'll link to them right here. Thanks for watching the video. If it was helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, which will help more people see it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications.